H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. So in the previous sessions, uh, we saw what we spoke about arrays. We spoke about uh, loops. Uh, we saw one-dimensional array. We saw two-dimensional arrays, right? And then uh, we saw what is a loop, actually. Uh, we spoke about, we, we already know what is an if and else statement, OK? So uh, most of the times, you would use if and else statement uh, for sure in, in your programming. So it's, it's if and else. Um, it's like a, uh, it's like separation. What do you want to do? Is is this statement true? If this is true, then do something else. You do something else. Okay. Now you can even have nested if and else conditions also. What does that mean? So for example, if you have if suppose this is true, right? Uh, and we know that if actually takes a, a boolean value, um, you can use some conditions also to check here. Now inside if also you can add one more if. OK, so you can do something like this. So this is known as a nested uh, if conditions. All right. So likewise, we can even have nested for loops also. OK. All right. So this is what we spoke about. And uh, uh, we'll talk about two other loops also. So let me just do this one. We'll start from this example itself. Now, this is one way of looping it. So we say loop in the sense because we iterate. We loop in the sense like we keep on checking if there are any values, any values, any values present or not, right? So this is what a loop is actually, right? So it's suppose you loop something in your hand, that means you rotate something in your hand, right? Uh, so likewise, we can loop it in using this for loop or we can use, this is our traditional for loop and this is the advanced for loop, okay? Uh, or we say it as an enhanced for loop, uh, uh, it's a lot more easier, right? And we have, the other way out of doing it also using streams. We will talk about streams when we uh, use collections. OK, so we'll see that later. But let's try to understand other loops also. So uh, what is the other way out? I can uh, print the same information. I can use a while loop. OK, so the way for loop here, right? You check for a condition int i equal to 0, right? This is, I mean, this is not condition. You're just initializing something here. And why are we initializing this one, guys? Because we need those index inside uh, our for loop to be printed, right? So we initialize something, and we increment that also. So this is one step, two step, and three step. So second step, we basically check for the condition, right? So based out of this condition only, the code inside the for loop gets executed, right? If suppose this condition is false, it will never get executed. OK, so if I say um, i is equals to, let's say, if I just said 10, will that execute? No, because if it says if index i equal to 0 and i is less than name dot length, what is the name of name dot length? It is, it is 4. It will never execute my if statement. I mean, it will not even come inside this block of code because the initial value of index is actually 10. If it is 3, it works, right? It will only loop one time. But if it is more than 4, then it will not even come inside, OK? So here, so, so we just initialize it with zero. Okay. Likewise, we've got something as a while loop, right? So while what it takes is it also takes kind of a, a true value, right? It's it's a boolean. I'm saying that if something is true here, then only come inside and uh, do something. So for example, if I just assess out and uh, let's do this, let me just cut this and create something as uh, loops. Okay. So copy this, paste it here loop loops say yes and i would just say this as loops okay i'll just come here copy this details okay and just paste it here and let me make this as peter now, you can take any kind of array, guys. I mean, we have seen here as a string array. You can take an integer array, float, byte, short, int, any kind of arrays you can take it, by the way, OK? 
So this is uh, Peter, Tom, and Ben, right? And this one we saw one kind of array here. So if I copy this and uh, just copy this to line of code, come back here, paste it here, right? And uh, come back here, remove this one. So this is, I would just say Control Shift F, format the code. So there is a few shortcuts, guys. Now, what is a shortcut here? Let's say, for example, um, you have something in a, not a proper format. Like, see, this is not in a proper format, right? I know. I mean, how do I, by seeing this one, can I know exactly what's going on here? I have to kind of read things, right? So I have to format this code. Sometimes uh, you might end up um, removing some spaces and whatnot, right? or add some spaces, but you want to exactly format the code. So all you can do is you can just say Control Shift F, Control Shift F, or if you are in a Mac, it's Command Shift and F, OK? So there's something out here also. You can say Source Format. So I'm doing the same here. Command, this is my Command Shift F is for formatting. So you can just click on Source and say Format also, OK? All right, so this is what you can do it. Now let's loop the same thing using a while loop also. So let me just comment this out. Um, Ctrl Z, source, one sec, add comment. So this is good. So this is control command this. Perfect, okay. All right, so this is my for loop. This is my enhanced for loop. Now let's use a while loop here. So I would say while true trua. If I simply say something as sys out control space, um, let's do this. Hello world. Okay, now if I run this program, run as Java application. See this, what's happening? Do you see that it's it's keep on scrolling actually? It's not stopping. The reason? I think it's pretty clear because this is a while loop. Now this is a true condition. Now this condition is true, I keep on looping. It always comes and check whether the condition is true, con condition is true. If it is yes, it will go and just print the statement inside this code, okay? So let me just stop this. If you want to stop something, you can just um, Command C or Control C, or you can just click on this one here. I think, yeah, just come and click on this one on the red, something on the right here. Okay, now it has stopped. Now I'll just take this help of while loop in order to do the same sort of printing, um, what I've done it here. Okay, so how do I do that? First, what I would, I'm going to do is, I'm going to say int i equal to zero. Because if you see in this for loop, that's what I have done it here, right? Um, so that's bad. Like this. Okay, so this is what I've done it in this piece of code. Let me format it again. What would be? Okay, control shift F. Okay, so the very first thing I've done is to initialize something. So that's what I'm doing it here. Int i equal to zero. Okay. Next is index less than names.length. Copy this one, paste it here. See this, I'm just tweaking some things out here. I mean, it all depends on uh, how do you do that. So this is i, I will put it as an i out here. Okay, now I will just print the same thing here. I would just copy this line of code, paste it here. So I'm just copying and pasting things. And instead of i, we know, uh, instead of index, I know we have used index sorry i so i'll just use i out here see i just copied and pasted the only thing is while loop only takes a condition which is either going to be true or false so this is what i'm checking it here right now let me run this run as the application see this what's happening here guys can anyone tell me what's the problem here what is happening it's still scrolling why it is scrolling it comes and checks, is i, what is the value of i? i is 0. Is it less than length? What is the length? 
length is four, right? It keeps on looping. It keeps on looping. It keeps on looping. Actually, it's an infinite loop, right? Because yeah, that's correct. It's an infinite loop because there is nothing, no such condition that it'll stop here, stop execution because we're not incrementing it. So let's do another thing. Also, we will try to debug this code, right? So let's debug this code. I was thinking of talking about the debugging of the code. In order to debug a code, what you have to do is uh, right click on the numbers where, where you see that, OK? And uh, where, if you do not see the numbers, you have to right click on the left and say show line number, OK? And then right click on the same number and say toggle breakpoint or shift command B or control, um, control shift B as a breakpoint. So I just added a breakpoint. If you guys see, there is a tiny, tiny little dot out here, okay, which uh, is a breakpoint for me. So right click on this. Now do not say run as, just a debug as, okay? No running as, no debug as. So when I say debug as, um, just say no. Okay. Now you can see this. My code has been has stopped here. So let me just do another thing here. Um, let's stop this. Right click, debug as Java application. Okay, so there's a debug perspective. I think everyone knows what is the perspective. So this is known as a debug perspective, wherein you see um, a different view actually. Okay, so this is a different view. Uh, nothing, nothing fancy though. Okay, but there are a few things which are important in this view, which you can see that upfront. Now it has stopped in this piece of line because if you see there's a arrow mark. I'm not sure if you guys can able to see that. This is an arrow mark and this piece of code has been highlighted for me. It is not moving. See, now if what I can do is I can say um, run and I would say uh, step into or step over. So usually I use, it's been a long time again. Okay, so step over F6, right? It goes to the next line of code. Now I would just say run. Okay, step over F6 now. It goes to the next line of code. Now I can keep on doing F6 instead of going to the run and doing it. I can just say um, my F6 here, right? See this? Now, what is that? See this? Every time it is printing this going to the line number 24, where is it going? It is going to again to the while condition, while loop, right? It checks for the condition. What is the value of uh, I? Is it still less than or greater than whatever it is, right? So it goes and checks here. So that's the reason. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Uh, that's the reason you can see this code is going here, coming back, coming out, going here, coming out, right? Now, on top of it, you can see what is the actual values of this i on the right-hand side. See this? What is i? i is 0. What is names? Names is this one here. And how many values do I have it in the names? I can just expand it. Right, you can see on the zeroth, I've got Peter, one, I've got Tom, two, I've got Mark, three, I've got Ben. Okay, so when you're in debug mode, you can see a lot of information. Now, if even though you just put your mouse on top of the names, it will tell you exactly what you have inside that actually, right? See this, you've got in the zero, you have got Peter, first, you've got Tom, second, third, likewise. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stop this one here and just increment this here now we know we in this case we have got we have initialized it check on the condition and then initializing it so the same thing we're going to do it here also i would just say i plus plus okay now again debug this code debug as java application now we are here i would just use uh, function f6 see this now what's the value of i is keep looking into here guys on the right hand side, or I can just put a uh, mouse on top of i, it'll tell you the value of i is 2, right? If I do a f6 again, right? See this on the right hand side, you, if you would see here, now it is 2. The moment I get out of this code, it will be 3 now. See this? Now, boom, I'm done. My code is done. So this is known as a while loop wherein you check, you initialize it somewhere outside, check for a condition. It's not like uh, as you are basically trying to loop it uh, to, an, to a known array, so you're doing it in this way. But um, 
uh, you initialize it here and then you basically check for a condition here it's as simple as that guys okay so once you do a small example it's it's crystal clear for everyone okay but again doing things are pretty important uh, there are simple problems hard problems um, but again you need to know the concepts behind what's going on out here okay now there is another one as a do while loop now you can ask me can i use a for loop can i use a while loop which where can i use it well it's your choice uh, you can use anything anywhere though okay but uh, certain places you would use for loop which will look easier to do use it you will not use a while loop here in this case i would i would go with a for loop because for loop is a lot more um, easier for me okay i can still use a while loop no one is going to stop me out but i would take the choice of choice of a for loop here Likewise, we got something as a do while loop also. Okay, so what is a do while loop? So I will execute the same piece of code using a do while loop. Okay, now do what? Uh, I would again take this as my index. Okay, do um, copy this piece of code, copy this, paste it here. Okay, what happened here? Right? So system dot order print in the same thing what we have done it here. Names of i. Names of i. Okay. What is the condition I'm going to give here? Condition is is i less than names dot length. Same thing I see this. Do something then check for a condition okay i can even um i have to loop it right i mean i have to increment that as well pretty much same thing what we have done it in a while loop also don't you think so so in, in a while loop also we use this then check for a uh, condition here Control z check for a condition here if everything is good come back and to this piece of code here, this piece of code here, right? See this? Now let's run this. Run as our application. Here we go. Peter, Peter, why Peter is coming two times? Can anyone tell me why Peter is coming two times? Because of this piece of code, right? So let's comment this out. Here we go. Okay, so now we'll run this code. So there's a question: Do we ha have to assign the value i to uh, value zero to i? Oh uh, well, if you do not assign, right? Okay, it'll basically give you a compile time error. The reason is because if you are using any variable, it's a good question though. If you are using any variable inside, if you are using it somewhere, right? You have to initialize it i to something. Right. If I say i is equals to zero here, now we are good. If you can see, there's a slight difference, guys. I mean, I know it's it's pretty hard to see here, but if I if I don't initialize it here, the local variable. This is known as a local variable. We'll talk about different kind of variables. Okay. Why is it a local variable? Because this variable, we know what is a variable which is inside a method. So any variable which is inside a method is a local variable. That is, the scope of the variable is only inside. It is not outside. We'll come to that. But yeah, so if int i is nothing, by default, it is, it is supposed to be 0 if it is an instance variable. So if you're trying to use it here, so suppose I, I, I remove this piece of code, right? I have no problems with this code. See this? Everything works fine. I mean, there's no compile time error. How do I know it is a, no, there's no compile time error? Because there's no red um, anywhere. OK, so now. If I just use this piece of code somewhere, or let's say, for example, if I say sys out and say i, right? See this? I started getting an underscore, uh, say, the local variable i may not have been initialized. It basically tells me that it has not been initialized. How we are using it, right? It is, it is, it is against the compilation, actually. So this will not allow you to do that. So that's the reason you can initialize it here by saying i equal to 0 or 1 or whatever you want, or i equal to zero here also if you're not initializing it here the bottom line is you need to initialize it somewhere before even using it okay it's a good question by the way what is a method um okay so method is 
it's a main method okay now method is a is a function uh, which has a which has some code which you can call it from somewhere so we'll get to that but as of now you can see this one as a method because um you have a class here and you got something as a public static void main and it starts with a open bracket right o open parenthesis close parenthesis you got something here we'll talk about these things and then it starts with a um, curly braces it ends with the curly braces right so technically if i just only talk about a method this is a method for me right public static void main so anything which have something like this and like this i mean a, a name with parentheses open parentheses close with a curly braces it's basically a method okay so there's a uh, method is a function that allows us to perform some task and uh, that's correct and we will see what is a task also you can do the same task um, in the main method so we say this is a main method okay because it's a function we say it is a function or a method um, which does be some piece of code right so it executes some piece of code like in this case it is executing this piece of code here see this have we got huge amount of code here right you go to zero here okay so Again, I think everyone uh, understood by now method is something. Now, if I want to create another method also, I would just say public void. We'll talk about every any of these things. Um, call me. So this is a method for me. See this? You guys see the uh, see how the method looks like? Okay. So we'll see the importance of method pretty quick. 